Good evening. I'm your host, Greta McKenna Gibson, and welcome to Under the Table, an anthology podcast which brings you audio plays of all sorts once a month. For our first episode, we're going to start you off with a short one. Two women, sisters, living alone in the 19th century, caught between a war in a blizzard when they get a knock at the door in the middle of the night. I think we should go see what they're going to do about it. Interior, tavern, evening. The year is 1845. Outside, snow is falling. The energy is low, and most of the patrons are old men, injured, or women. Ursula Calder, age 32, and Evelyn Calder, age 24, enter the tavern with their baskets. They approach the bar with purpose. A man is sitting with his head in his hands, obviously drunk. Ursula slaps the bar a few times, getting the attention of the barkeep. Her slapping wakes the man next to her. Thomas? Thomas? Thomas, the bartender, peeks around the corner. He comes over and passes Ursula a coin purse. In exchange, Evelyn gives him a handful of herbs and dried meats. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, girls. With the doctor off in the fray, I need to have something around. Ursula smiles politely, but her eyes make it clear. She knows this was no compliment. She holds her dried garden tighter. She looks down at the man on the bar. You should probably save some of that for him. He just got back this morning. Evelyn turns to him, suddenly excited. Did anyone else get back? How is it? Are we making any progress on the front? Nearby ears poise themselves for news. Lady, Evelyn, I don't really care. If you know what's good for you, you'll pack up, put your tail between your legs, and switch sides. Bar goes quiet at his outburst. He takes a deep drink of his beer and wipes the foam away with gumption. You believe in God? You think he wants freedom for this country? Tell me that again when you're wiping blood from your face and smoke from your eyes and only three members of your squadron are left. Then you come home and it turns out there's a famine. Well, we have to keep hope or we've already lost. You want hope? I just hope you're smart enough to run when trouble comes knocking or they'll give your pretty little head to their generals. The man finishes his beer and walks away. We're all gonna die. It's just about saying your prayers in time now. Ursula, Evelyn, and the entire bar look at the man as he staggers up the stairs. Evelyn looks at Ursula, panic in her eyes, her breathing now shallow with fear. He's fine. Ursula's smile is forced. Exterior, street, night, a house at the end of the road. There's nothing else but trees for at least a mile. The world is heavy, laden with the ever-falling snow. Darkness has come, and the moon is hidden by thick cloud cover. Ursula and Evelyn walk down the road with a lantern. The snowstorm has picked up. With harsh winds blowing, the small white flakes seem to move sideways. In the distance, a wolf calls, prompting the women to stop. They listen, holding their breath. She's far enough. Let's go. The two sisters move quicker now towards the house. Chimney smoke blows as if from a freight train in the unforgiving night. Interior, Calder House, later. Portraits line the walls, stripped of their frames. Signs of former wealth seem to litter the dim house. Evelyn sits by the window in her nightgown, looking out into the night. Her brows are furrowed, and that same fear from the bar is in her eyes. A rabbit heart. Ursula comes close, dimming the lamps. I know the night is harsh, but Jonathan's with his whole troop. I'm sure Something's out there. What? Ursula rushes to the window and sees what Evelyn has been watching. A lone lantern, faint, growing stronger, bobs up and down through the blizzard. It could be Jonathan. I know my husband. Ursula presses close to Evelyn, joining her at the window seat. Do you think perhaps it's someone from the tavern? Tonight? The two of them look out at the snow. No one would be out tonight. They take each other's hand and share a look of false reassurance. 
The light grows ever brighter, their anticipation. Minutes later, a knock at the door. Ursula and Evelyn startle, despite the knowledge of its approach. Ursula goes to the door. Evelyn looks all around, finding only a letter opener within reach. She holds it behind her back and stands several feet behind her sister. Ursula opens the front door, just a crack. Good evening. The lamplight flares, revealing a tall man in full uniform, the tan colors of the enemy. Good evening. I seem to have gotten lost in the storm. I'm hoping you might offer me some hospitality. Evelyn cranes her neck to see, but spots instead pinpricks of blood in the line of the man's footsteps. Hawkson catches Evelyn's look, noticing her for the first time. His face softens to a predatory smile. You girls alone? I'm sorry, but you're not welcome here. She begins to close the door when- I really don't mean to impose, but- A click, his hand on his gun at his hip. Since you're insisting, I think I could stay the night. Ursula is rigid. She backs away slowly as he enters their home. He keeps his gun pointed. My name is General Hawkson. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Do introduce yourselves. Hi, Ursula. This is my sister Evelyn. Another drop of his blood on the carpet. Wonderful. Now, Evelyn, whatever it is you got behind your back, I suggest you show it to me. Evelyn winces and withdraws her makeshift weapon slowly. <laughs> what was your plan? Open all my letters right home to my wife? Thoroughly amused by his own joke, he moves further into the Calder house. Come now. It's a cold night. A man needs a hot meal. Ursula stares daggers at Hawkson. Evelyn, go into the kitchen and get some stew for Mr. General. General Hawkson. Ursula, I... Now! Evelyn bursts out of the room, leaving Ursula holding unwavering eye contact with General Hawkson. We're not going to send you out. Put that thing down. He lowers his gun. I thank you for your consideration on the matter. Interior, Calder House, dining room. Evelyn, Ursula, and Hawkson sit around an old dining table. The room is dimly lit, with musty curtains and a large mirror on the wall. The sisters are tense, unsure, but Hawkson relaxes into his chair, eating the stew as if it were the first food he'd had in days. As he relaxes, his discomforts begin to show. His leg has stopped bleeding. Evelyn examines the man carefully. How did you arrive here? Where are your men? Hawkson stops eating, surprised by her questions. I don't see why I should have to answer anything to you. Don't then. <sighs> I got separated from my troops in the storm. We've been sleeping on the edge of the mountain when a huge amount of snow fell on our camp. I got thrown down on side, wound up in town. Someone tried to shoot me, so I shot him right back. And then I saw the light of your place. Here I am. How can we know that's true? You want to hear it? Ursula squints in distrust. Can you tell your sister to stand down? I'm not going by it. I'll be on my way in the morning. Good. I mean, you know, huh? A pregnant pause as Hawkson examines Evelyn's form in her nightgown. Where are your husbands? The women share a look, but remain poignantly silent. Ah, find me. Guess they didn't need to leave home for that. Lucky me. Evelyn looks out the window, reminded of her husband. I've never been married. Well, what's wrong with you? Too much of a viper? I'm afraid you'll have to find out. He looks back to Evelyn. Well, I've told you something about me. Now you have to tell me something about you. Ursula takes Hawkson's now empty bowl. I'm getting you more stew. She huffs angrily back to the kitchen. Evelyn and Hawkson are alone at the table. The wind outside whistles. The wolf calls out in the night. Closer this time. What are you going to do when we're back in power? If. All right, fine. If we win this war, 
your village faces destruction. There's only a few ways out. What's your plan? I'll take my life and be with God. That's a bit extreme. There's other ways, you know. Hoxon reaches his hand across the table. An offer. We could avoid your town. Take another roll back. Evelyn presses her back against her chair. Every muscle in her body tenses. We will house you and feed you, even tend to your wounds if you ask as you were forceful. But I am a good woman, sir. You would not take a bride from her husband. He chuckles, endeared, rising from his chair. When did you last hear from your husband? Evelyn stands. He went through the Northern Pass eight days ago. Oh, pretty lady. My condolences. So did I. All stops as Evelyn's face moves from confusion to understanding. Then something else. A calm comes over Evelyn. Though she remains tense, the fear has gone from her body. Her rabbit heart replaced. Hawkson's posture changes as well. Noticing the sudden poise she has adopted, he is unsure of his status as a threat. I'm not sure you understand. Your husband is dead. We killed him. I heard you the first time. Thank you. Ursula comes back through the door. Won't you sit down, General Hoxon? A twinge of fear in his eyes. A foreign situation. Yes, I think I will. He sits as Ursula returns his bowl to him, Raising the spoon to his lips, his gaze remains unbroken, unsure of how to best proceed. What's going on? I don't know what you're talking I was talking to the other one. Evelyn's face, cool on the surface, begins to crack at the edges with anger. Hoxon continues to shovel his food into his mouth. Being strange. I expected tears. You know some, I don't. Only what it is like to have a beating heart. Ursula looks over to see Evelyn shaking. A gust of wind whistles through the chimney as if the house were moaning. Hoxon lifts his bowl to his mouth, quickly finishing his second helping. He slams it back on the table. Okay. Well, I've had just about enough of this. It's time we all went to bed. He rises from the table, going around and grabbing Evelyn by the arm. He wavers. A head rush. You're gonna keep my bed warm. Stop it. Evelyn's shock finally breaks open into anger as she snaps, biting Hawkson's free hand. He cries out and recoils to find blood dripping down his arm. He blinks several times, confused, dizzy, then angry. Ursula pulls Evelyn back to her. Hawkson wields a large knife from his belt. I'm not asking. I want you to try it again. Ursula keeps looking at Hawkson expectantly. Waiting, he begins to sway. You little. He stops. Suddenly, vomit erupts from his mouth down his chin. He bends over, clutching his gut. What did you do to me? We fed you dinner, like you asked. Hoxon looks back up, realization dawning, eyes full of hatred. Which? Ursula's shoulders have relaxed from their tense position. Good night. General. Hoxon finally slumps over, landing with a thud on the carpet. Evelyn is wide-eyed in fresh shock. Did you poison the soup? Ursula is moving around, quickly gathering Hoxon's things. I just drugged it. No poison around. And only a second bowl. I wasn't sure if you'd figure to the first time. Evelyn stands, catching her breath. Overwhelmed. She looks out at the blizzard but only sees her dark reflection in the window glass. Blood from Hoxon's hand has splattered onto her cheek. She touches it delicately. Ursula? Ursula stops to look at her sister. Do you think he's actually dead? Ursula looks down at the unconscious Hoxon, thinking. I don't know. Evelyn sits on the floor, wholly undignified, and starts to sob. I'm so tired. I'm so tired of this. Everyone's lost hope. I don't want to do this anymore. The sound of the wolf calls out, as if right outside the house. Ursula looks at her sobbing sister, helpless, sinking into her own exhaustion. 
but she only allows her own broken heart to breathe for a moment. There's work to do. The wolf bays again. Evelyn looks up to see Ursula, offering her the handle of General Hoxon's knife. What? The wolf was never outside, Evelyn. End this. Evelyn understands, and her tears stop. She wipes her nose with the back of her wrist and takes the knife. She stands and walks exhausted and with a tear-stained face to the drugged man. Interior, tavern, daylight. The snow has stopped and sunlight streams through the windows. Those who stayed in the rooms upstairs are down at the tables awaiting breakfast. The men are groggy and their life force drained. The door bursts open, grabbing all of their attention as the severed head of the opposing side's general is thrown into the center of the room. The men look up to see two women in bloodied nightgowns standing in the door. The end. Well, that's certainly one way to go about it. Be careful what you summon when you decide to push someone's buttons. Thank you for joining us at our very first episode of Under the Table. Come back next month for an all-new story. Questions? Comments? A creeping feeling of dread? Send us an email at underthetableapodcast at gmail.com. Under the Table is brought to you by Oh Boy Productions and patrons like you. If you like our show, please consider donating to our Patreon. Today's episode, All's Fair, was written, directed, and hosted by Greta McKenna Gibson. The voice of Evelyn was performed by Monica Bowman. The voice of Ursula was performed by Melissa Taylor. The voice of General Hoxon and Thomas was performed by Jesse Inokala. The voice of the man at the bar was performed by Ken Tynan. Sound editing for this episode was done by Noah Valentine Meyer.